Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is February 22nd, 2024. This is going to be the final video in God's warning to the mountains of Israel. And it's called, Where is God, your maker? This would have been the fourth one, but last night the Lord directed me to go to the verses in Deuteronomy and 1 Samuel that exposes the deep, deep witchcraft that our churches are involved in. It's very heinous. It's, it's very criminal with respect to who they say they are. It's the same sin as the Jews, and you know they crucified Christ. Well, we come now to the epitome of the book of Job with respect to exposing Job's sin and exposing all of our sin. We all sin. And there's only one way out. And his name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, who came and died for you and me. It's all about him. Where is our maker? Where is my maker? Where is your maker? That was Job's greatest sin. He lifted himself up above God instead of seeking God, instead of seeking his maker. I want to take you now through the scriptures and the revelation that God gave me over the last two weeks with respect to this in the Word of God itself. And that's all we're looking at. See, I've only been reading from Job chapters 32, 33, 34, 35. I think we move into 35 for this one today. And the revelation from God has been so profound that it's, there are scriptures that he's brought me to that I've read hundreds of times, but just didn't get it. I just said, what are you saying, Paul? What does that really mean? You know, why is this so important? And what's the significance of it? Today we're going to find out Today we're going to really look at the, the greatest sin of Job of all, which was to deny Christ. Deny Christ. And you, you know how you deny Christ? You stand in the place of Christ. You become antichrist. It's a hard thing to understand, and the, the world doesn't understand it, and neither does the church. But see, that's what happened with Mike Bickle. Mike Bickle took the place of Christ. He could do no wrong. And men worshipped him, and he loved it. Women worshipped him, and he loved it. Men worshipped Nimrod, and he loved it. The great sin of man is to make yourself an idol. Remember the last verse of 1 John? Beloved, keep yourselves from idols. Do not become antichrist. Do not take the place of Christ. Because when you do, you force Christ to crucify himself again. And he's not going to do that. Read Hebrews chapter 6 and see how serious this is now for Mike Bickle and everyone else who has done that. I don't know what they're going to have to go through. But I, I am going to be part of helping them go through it as a priest of the order of Melchizedek because we reconcile men and women to God. 
that's what it's all about. We don't take from you to give you something spiritual. That's why Paul did not get paid as a minister. And it's an important lesson. So let us begin to understand the final, the final temptation, the final way that you can fail. Let's seek our maker, Jesus, together. Now remember where we are in the book of Job. We have gone through chapters 32, 33, and 34, and we got to the end of 34. And suddenly, Elihu says this, Would that Job were tried to the end, because he answers like wicked men. For he, he adds rebellion to his sin. He claps his hands among us, and multiplies his words against God. So the last video, I talked about rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And then we went into the eight words used in Deuteronomy chapter 18 concerning what witchcraft and sorcery and all that is. And so, rebellion, rebellion, you rebel against a kingdom. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft because it's utter betrayal. It's going to the enemy. It's going to the dark side. It's going to Satan for help. So chapter 35 then says this. It starts like this. Elihu answered and said, Do you think this to be just, Job? Do you say, it is my right before God? That you ask, what advantage have I? How am I better off than if I had sinned? See, he's saying, Job, you wonder whether or not your life was even worthwhile. Now, but not only that, You say, it is my right before God to ask what advantage there is. You're right before God. We have one right. We have the right to become a son of God. Rights are the things that evil men have used to enslave us forever. God calls us to be his slave. And he is a good slave master. And yet we don't trust him. We don't um, think he'll take good care of us. And so we always go to the other slave master, to men. Where do, where do you go for your health care? You know, where do you, you trust them? You, you trust them with your health after you know what they did? And you don't trust God for your health? Do you think they have your interest at heart? You know, wake up. So Elihu then answers Job's question about that. He says, if you've sinned, what do you accomplish against God? And if your transgressions are multiplied, what do you do to him? If you're righteous, what does that give him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness concerns a man like yourself. Your wickedness only concerns other people. And your righteousness, only a son of man. Your wickedness and your righteousness concern men. God, what does he get from it? Because of the multitude of oppressions, people cry out. They call for help because of the arm of the mighty. But none says, where is God, my maker? 
Let me read that again. Because of the multitude of oppressions, people cry out. They call for help because of the arm of the mighty. That means because of what they're doing to us, because of what our rulers do to us. And because of that multitude of oppressions, the people are crying out. But none says, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of the heavens? There they cry out, but he does not answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely God does not hear an empty cry, nor does the Almighty regard it. How much less when you say that you do not see him, that the case is before him and you're waiting for him. Oh, once again, you put yourself above God. And now because his anger does not punish you right away, and he does not take much note of your transgression, Job opens his mouth in empty talk. He multiplies words without knowledge. In this chapter 35, that's where the Lord directed me to another scripture that I had never ever thought of going to before. And it's dealing with the title of this teaching, this video, this word of the Lord for the mountains of Israel. This is verse 10 of Job 35. None says, no one says, where is God, my maker? The one who gives songs in the night. Well, suddenly I had some verse come through my mind and I said, where is that? It's in Romans chapter 10, verses 5 to 13. So let's go to Romans 10, 5 to 13. This is why it's important to write notes in your Bible. You can direct yourself to um, places that you need to, uh, to go. <clears throat> Now, starting with verse 5 in Romans chapter 10, Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by those commandments. But the righteousness based on faith says, and then he quotes a scripture. So the righteousness based on faith says a certain thing. And he's going to tell us what that is. You know, this is the difference between the law and faith. And we only come in through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not because of good works that we do. So Paul is directing us to have true faith in Jesus Christ, who is the word of God here. So true faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. And then it goes on a little bit. But I'm going to stop there because we can't understand it if we don't break this apart. So if you have faith in Jesus, and you have faith in the righteousness of Jesus instead of your own righteousness, we, none of us get in based on our own righteousness. None of us are good enough. We only get in one way, Jesus. So if you have that faith, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? Because to say that is to bring Christ down. Now, I suddenly had the thought from the Lord as I read that passage in Job that that was what that was talking about. So, I want to go to some notes to try to just bring this idea of what Paul is saying there. First, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven in order to find God. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? I'm going to go find God. So that he can then present God to mankind. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that what these false prophets have done? I've heard so many say that they appear regularly in heaven. First, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven in order to find God? Because that's to bring Christ down. 
If you do that, if you ascend into heaven like that, with your decrees and, you know, everything that you say you hear in heaven and do in heaven, if you do that, it would be like Lucifer who says, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will exalt myself above every other man who thinks he is chosen of God, every star in heaven, and I will set my own throne in heaven. Isn't that what Mike did, Mike Pickle? Isn't that what so many of the leaders of the church have done? They became their own stars. They have their own Bibles, their own universities named after their, their name. I will ascend above the earth into heaven, above the highest clouds, and once there I will make myself like the most high God. What is that? That is Antichrist, and that is the sin of Mike Bickle. That is the sin of the entire church, and that is the potential sin of the overcomer, the potential sin of the mountains of Israel. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Don't seek a name for yourself. Remember Jesus' promise to the church of Philadelphia. They're the ones that were singled out as getting the crown, but said, take care, lest someone seize your crown right before I come. And remember one of the promises to those people, to the overcomers, and they were all overcomers in Philadelphia, was, I will give you a new name. Don't seek your own name. Seek God's name for you, a new name. Now, what I'm saying here should not surprise you at all if, if you are knowledgeable of the Holy Scriptures. We live now at the very end of this age. We are in the midst of the tribulation. And a lot of you don't even know it yet. But, guys, if it got much worse than this, none of us would survive. I'm going to read Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. Now, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, that's the, that word being gathered together is the word episanugogi. It only occurs elsewhere in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And it specifically talks about a gathering in the air with Jesus. And this is the first fruits gathering. We ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, or the apostasy comes first, or you. Another good translation is the divorcement comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction or the son of perdition. So you have, sometimes it says the man of sin is revealed and uh, then it's either going to be the son of destruction or the son of perdition. Who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Remember, we are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit resides in my heart. This is talking about something that happens that shows you that there is someone besides the Holy Spirit, someone besides Jesus in the heart. Think about Mike Bickle. What is in his heart? What's in his heart? Is it Jesus? Is that Jesus? 
Is that who you worship? Then that's why you worship him, isn't it? The man of sin, the man of lawlessness has been revealed and God used Mike Bickle as one of the biggest examples of it. It's to show this, the abomination of desolation that is now in the holy place, is now in men's hearts because people worship Mike Bickle, don't they? Now you get it. People worship Mike Bickle. Women worshiped Mike Bickle. That's why it was so easy. Men worshiped Mike Bickle. That's why they stayed with him because there's benefits that come from someone you worship, right? But the question is, what did they worship? What did they worship? So now go to Matthew 24, of course, and look what Jesus says about this time, starting in verse 15. So when you see, when you see, do you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place? Do you see it? It doesn't say when everybody sees it. Do you see it yet? Let the reader understand. Do you understand? Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Who are those mountains? Those are the mountains of Israel. Who are in Judea? Christians. Who's the king of the Jews? Jesus. It is time to flee. You need to find the mountains of God and you need to flee there. Now, because here's what the sin of Job was and this is the sin of Lucifer. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. In other words, you don't have anything of value. Get out of there. And let the one who's in the field not turn back to take his cloak. You don't have anything of value. Get out of there. And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those nursing infants in those days, you have a ministry? No. You need to get out of there. You're not taking care of anyone now because this is the end. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. Just do it. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never, ever, ever will be. We've lived through half of it at least. This COVID-19 has tried to kill me three times. And if those days had not been cut short, no flesh, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. I'm here to tell you those days will be cut short and you will have help. But you have to see this. You have to know help is coming. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. Oh, you mean I've got to go up, I've got to ascend up to find Christ so I can bring him down and show everybody that I have Christ. You know, the people who are going across country to try to get a spiritual blessing upon some icon of their church or the people lying on graves. You know, that's exactly what the necromancer does. And the church, people are doing that. Grave soaking, they call it. Unbelievable. I, I'm astounded. So if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christ's, and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he's in the wilderness. Don't go out there. Don't go out looking for Christ. If they say, look, he's in the inner rooms. Don't believe it. You don't have to go looking for Christ. You don't have to go up into heaven to bring him down to present to men. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. 
You will see Christ when he comes, believe me. But then he says, wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. So in other words, if there's death, if there is a false Christ, if there is an antichrist, that's where you find the demonic spirits. So IHOP is full of that. Look who is leading it, antichrist. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Wherever the dead body is, there the vultures will gather. So, this describes Job's rebellion. Remember, Elihu said, you've added rebellion to your sins. This was Satan's rebellion to raise himself above God. Because this act of rebellion would force Christ to come down to earth in order to show himself and thus prove to everyone that he is God and not this rebellious creature. See, he's forcing God to come down to argue with him. You know, he's contending with God. So that's the sin. And it has to do with rejecting Jesus. It has to do with crucifying Jesus a second time. Time. That's the, you know, that's the hard thing, crucifying Christ a second time. So, dear overcomers, I know you're nowhere near that, but it's such a serious warning. Father, we repent of our sins and we know you forgive us. And we pray you will keep us to the very end. Amen.